Art is in the eye of the beholder, and art instructor Robert Friedrich from Cape Central High School in Cape Girardeau encourages students to see things differently and express themselves freely. The most part I got into art was is that uh, I had some inspiration as far as when I was in high school. And the, the teacher that I had was uh, Herb Wickham, and uh, he just passed away about this past month. Um, he was my high school art teacher. and He really uh, kind of got me to where I could see what it would be like to be an art teacher as far as, you know, the relationship between uh, art, artist, art teacher, and student in a classroom and I seem to like that environment that he kind of had for us you know but uh, I think that was pretty much set off to the side as far as uh, wanting to be an art teacher as I went into the military joined the military I kind of kind of bummed around for a while and uh, really didn't have any direction at all uh, once I graduated high school and I think once I had gotten in the military and got a little bit more discipline about you know studying I decided to go to college and of course major in the only thing that I was ever really good at in high school and that would be art. When I was growing up I did a lot of it on my own. I was self-taught. But as far as inspiring me to become what I've uh, become, I'd say uh, Herb Wickham and uh, I'd say my mother. You know, my mom inspired me to stay in school and get an education. Well, I've, I've taught here for 18 years. Uh, I think this is my 18th year. Um, sometimes it goes by kind of kind of a blur, but I teach, uh, I teach ceramics one and two, and I teach sculpture. And uh, with me and the other two art teachers, Miss uh, Susan Cohen and Beth Thomas, um, we have a very well-rounded program. We dominate, and we like to dominate. We like to show that we have a, a proud program. Who is the arts for? I think the arts, that's the sad thing, I think, about the arts, you know. People just drop out. I think sometimes the parents might influence them to drop out, you know, they'll start asking questions like, what is that, you know? Instead of, tell me what that is, you know, or explain your, your picture to me in elementary school, you know. And I think it's sad, I think art's for everybody. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter how talented you are, you know. Um, if you enjoy expressing yourself, to express yourself. You don't have to impress anybody. I don't do my artwork to impress anybody. So what do I want my students to get out, out of my particular class is um, a sense of what the arts are. Uh, I get a sense of uh, paying attention to detail and craftsmanship. But I also want them to get out uh, that, you know, the projects we do is, is mature enough that they can enjoy it for the rest of their life, you know, that it could be on a shelf and be displayed within their own home. And I'm hoping that the stuff that the kids make in my class is stuff that they hold on to, you know, and that they have some pride in what they do and pride in their work. And I try to make sure that they understand that, that the craftsmanship and the pride, you know, goes beyond just what they do in my classroom. We all have different aesthetics, you know, what we like and dislike, you know. And I like to see that st style and that, that personality, that, that influence that they might have gotten here pour over into their, you know, their home life, you know. The way they, they decorate their home or the way they might decorate their yard or how, you know, how they take care of stuff. And I think that's even true for me, you know. I mean, my favorite uh, thing to do in sculpture is to take found objects and then incorporate those into my human figures. And I think I do the same thing with uh, my everyday life or even with my yard. And these are my water meters I use for uh, walking steps. I just kind of like to recycle everything. I have um, kind of a, um, I like rusty junk, but we always like to recycle and I always like to find, because a lot of my sculptures have a lot of um, found objects in them, so I like to even, you know, utilize my yard if it's a, a live sculpture, you know. So everything I plant, I have no rhyme or reason. Sometimes that drives people insane. I don't know, I don't like anything very symmetrical. I don't like that look that people have in their houses now where they got three bushes here and three bushes here. 
and you got four red bushes there. You got flowers planted in exactly the same location as they are on both sides of the house. And to me, that's just uh, boring. The fire pit is uh, it's actually came out of the house next door. So I tore down the old fire pit and rebuilt the new fire pit. And we even did a uh, joker's head. And the joker, if you get flames going really good inside, they all, he'll actually spit some flames out and a lot of smoke out of his mouth and out his ears. So we kind of enjoy that. I bought these hands, which are kind of weird. There are actually molds used in a factory for rubber gloves, for industrial gloves. So I have them looking like they're coming out of the ground and they're kind of bracing the uh, watering can. But anyway, we use sewer pipes. We'll use we reuse some of the pipes and stuff. Everything, my fence going around my yard, that's all been recycled. It's actually parts of an old gazebo that I found in the scrap yard. Uh, parking meter that came from uptown Jackson. Got that stuck in the flower bed for no reason. Um, that's our chicken coop. And the chicken coop is made out of recycled doors. So we got recycled doors, everything on it's been recycled. And of course, Tate has the chickens out. We have them out quite a bit. And that's this section back in here is just the garden where we have our tomatoes and our squash and beans and stuff. And the uh, old light that's on the side of the garage, that's uh, that came off of, uh, supposedly comes off one of the uh, bridge lights off the old Cape Toronto bridge. And uh, I redone it, rewired it, and hung it up there. And of course, our scarecrow, our magnificent scarecrow here. Uh, the gas can came off of, uh, uh, my grandfather's farm, it was in the junkyard for a scrap pile, and my son wanted me to do something with it, so I did. So, again, trying to find things to do with our recyclable stuff. Well, when we built the uh, we built the two car garage, uh, we uh, had one section of concrete left to pour, and you know everybody puts their hands in the concrete, you know, and then they put the date or how old your child was, you know, and stuff like that. Um, I decided I was going to lay out a thin sheet of uh, drop cloth. And we laid that on top of the concrete, and we took my son, who was at five, who was five years old at the time, and we laid him down in the cement, and then we kind of stepped on him. Uh, and got him to sink down. So now I have this great little spot that uh, reminds me of my child. Um, the only problem is I got a feeling when I get older, in my 80s and stuff, I'll probably end up tripping over it and have to have a hip replacement. So, but we we like it, and a lot of people think it's kind of weird that I did my entire son, but that's what it's all about. <laughs>